Savior Jesus Christ. I give honor to the Holy Ghost with my content, days and time for my deeds. It is good to be here in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, I stand before you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. I mind you that I can't do anything by myself, but I do trust in the Holy Ghost to speak to me all today. And I do trust the Lord to have no way. Give honor to my lovely wife, I love dearly. For these 36 years. Amen. 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 I thank God for my loving mother, Mr. Dawn McNeil, my love dearly. For these 57 years. Amen. 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 I honor our great ministers, deacons, deaconess, mothers, and everybody in the house on the day. Yes. I want to say again, we are so grateful for the Lord allowing us uh, to see our 25th uh, church anniversary. Amen. 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 The last Sunday we had a magnificent and marvelous time. Amen. 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 Our very own Reverend Harold Bull came forth with a mighty message. Amen. And it counted for an impact. Amen. Amen. And I think that encounter we had with him on last week, amen, has made and will make an impact on all of us going forward. Amen. What a marvelous word. Amen. We thank God for you in a mighty special way, Reverend Boone. And we really do appreciate you coming forth and blessing us. Amen. With that powerful word. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I'm still celebrating. Amen. 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 I, I think we ought to keep celebrating at least the rest of the year. Amen. Right. Amen. To God be the glory. Because it is a blessing to be in this ministry for these 25 years and ever. How long you've been here, amen, celebrate those years as well, amen. So we, we thank God. We're not going to prolong the time. We're going to the Word of God. It is the New Testament book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 12. Amen. Always delighted to see the saints of fam. And when we gather together, it's a blessing to my soul. And I just thank God for all of us being together here on today. Amen. 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 If I ain't mistaken, I see one of my nose from the Maryland area <laughs> has stepped in the house. Tomorrow. God bless you, girl. Welcome home. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. We bless God. <laughs> All right. We're in the Gospel of John, chapter 12. We're going to look at verses. 37 through 46. John chapter 12, verses 37 through 46. If you got to say amen. amen. Let us read this together and read this. But though he, he had done so many miracles, miracles before them, yet they, they believed not on him, him that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom had the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory, and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of God, of men, more than the praise of God. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him, that sent me. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Amen. Amen. I thank God for the reading of his holy word. If you would, I would like you to turn to the person next to you and say, Neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. In this vastly, in this vastly populated world, populated there are a variety, a variety of believers. Of believers. Neighbor, neighbor, all day, in this great big world in which we live, there must be and there are a 
variety of beliefs. But I want to ask you today, by way of the subject, what kind of believer are you? That's my subject for this morning. What kind of believer are you? Let us pray. Dear Lord God, my heavenly Father, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus, dear Lord, I come before you, Lord, as humble as I know how, desire for you to come on into this. I pray, Lord, that you speak to your servant on today. Please forgive me for all my sins and shortcuts. Please send forth the anointing to destroy every yoke that would oppose your word or your servant on today. And let your word go forth free under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and with power. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Make a seat. Thank you so much. One more time, if you will, turn to your neighbor's name. Yeah. Oh, name. Oh, I want to ask you. I want to ask you. On today. On today. What kind? A believer, a believer are you. Are you? Let's give the Lord a hand and pray for you. I am pretty sure that most of you have heard the expression practice makes perfect, which is a good expression, but yet it can also be a bad expression as well, depending upon what you're practicing. It pretty much alludes to the fact that the more you do or practice something, the better at it you become. And that's quite all right if you're doing or practicing something good, meaningful, or worthwhile. But what happens when you do or are practicing something bad, harmful, and thereby meaningless, and especially ungodly? Well, I guess the same rule still applies. Practice makes perfect. So then now, the longer or the more frequent you do or engage or engage in something, amen, the better you are at it or the more entrenched in it you are. Somebody shout glory. glory. Ladies and gentlemen, we ought to be very careful of what it is that we're doing or practicing on a regular basis. Am I right about it? Amen. Because, <clears throat> glory, hallelujah. Uh, you see, you have to have a conviction, which is a firm belief that governs, that guides or leads you to right action or behavior. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. Amen. Because uh, sometimes when you think about conviction, you have to think about it in this context. Amen, that uh, you, you have to learn how to stand for something because if you don't, you'll fall for anything. Amen, Amen. If, you, uh, uh, if you are aimed at nothing, then you're guaranteed to hit it. Am I right about it? If you are going nowhere, then any road will lead you there. Somebody shout glory. glory. And in essence, nothing from nothing Leaves. Yeah. Ain't God good God. Amen. Amen. You see, because uh, when it's all been said and done, what you believe and what you practice will ultimately mold, shape, and uh, mold and shape your character as well as your destiny. Amen. But the biggest belief uh, that you must have is a belief in Jesus Christ. Amen. And by that belief, Amen. It is then uh, determined what kind of believer you are. Ain't God a God? Amen. Now, as we look at our text today, amen, we're in the gospel of John. John's gospel is not like the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which are similar in content, order, and statement. Amen. Uh, and John's gospel, amen, somewhat stands as a standalone gospel, amen, and it opens with the unique and divine statement that in the beginning was the word, ain't God a good God. It is offered by 
the Apostle John, who is also the author of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and the book of Revelation. Hey, God, good God. Amen. So in John chapter 12, beginning at verse 37, the Bible says, but though Jesus had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Talking about the Jews. John stands amazed and in awe of the fact that although the Lord Jesus had done so many mighty miracles, yet the people, many of them, did not believe in him. Amen. This unbelief was not uh, caused by a lack of evidence. Amen. The Lord had given them the most convincing and compelling proof, amen, of his lordship. But these people did not want to believe. They wanted a king to rule over them, amen, but they did not want to repent. Amen. The unbelief of the Jews was fulfilled, amen, the fulfillment of the prophecy that Isaiah had in, in Isaiah 53, amen, where the question is raised, who had believed our report, amen, and it calls for the answer at that time, not very many, amen, so those, so, so then those who refused to believe in Jesus, they practiced what is called unbelief. And this is the first believer that we're going to discuss. Amen. The unbeliever. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, yeah. Amen. We're talking about here the unbeliever. And I hope that does not describe you in here today. And since arm um, in scripture speaks of power or strength, the arm um of the Lord speaks of the mighty power of God. Amen. And God's power is revealed, amen, to, to only to those who believe, amen, the report concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, because not many accepted the announcement concerning the Messiah, amen, the power of God was not revealed to many. And God be God. And when the Lord Jesus, amen, presented himself to the nation of Israel, they rejected him over and over again. Amen. But he came back, amen, to them. Amen. With the offer of salvation. A God with God. Amen. But they kept saying no to him. Amen. Who is it among us that will continually say no to the Lord? We often say that Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Amen. All you have to do is say yes and let him in. A God with God. Amen. But they kept saying no to him. And that's why the Bible says that he was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, which were the Jews, and his own received him not. Ain't God with God. You see, the more you reject the gospel, the harder it becomes for you to receive it. Ain't God with God. When mankind closed their eyes to the light, God makes it more difficult for them to uh, see the light. Amen. God causes them to be struck with what is called, amen, judicial blindness. Uh -huh. This is a blindness in which God's judgment is on them for refusing his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is in line with the laws and the spirit of sowing and the reaping. Ain't God a good God? In other words, when it comes to faith in Jesus, when you sow unbelief, you reap spiritual blindness, a hardened heart, and a heart devoid of understanding. Ain't God a good God? So let me give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Uh, the explanation 
that this was Christ that he saw. It was Christ's glory, amen, which Isaiah saw, and it was Christ that he spoke of. Therefore, this verse, amen, is another important link in the chain of evidence that proves that Jesus Christ, amen, is the Son of God manifest in the flesh. Thank God and good God. Yet these people in their rejection of Jesus, amen, qualified themselves as unbelievers. But today, I want to ask you, what kind of believer are you? And I'm hoping it's not an unbeliever. Somebody shout glory. Verse 42 says, nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believe on him. Wait a minute. We have another type of believer here. He says, nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believe on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Thank God be God. In other words, many of the rulers of the Jews became convinced that Jesus was the promised Messiah or the anointed one. But they did not dare share their conviction with others for fear that they would be excommunicated or put out of the synagogue. And then you would like to think that these men were genuine believers in the Lord Jesus, but it is doubtful. Amen. Because when there is true faith, there will also be a true confession of Jesus Christ more sooner rather than later. Ain't God a good God? So when Jesus Christ is truly, amen, accepted and embraced as Lord and Savior, you won't hesitate to make it known, regardless of the opposition or consequences. Therefore, in response to the question, what kind of believer are you? These men would have to respond and by admitting that I am a silent or undercover believer. Ain't God a good God? That's the number two believer, a silent or undercover believer. Verse 43 says, For they love the praise of me more than the praise of God. That is a sad commentary. When people love being praised by man more so than being approved by God. Am I right about it? Amen. In other words, they were ashamed and they were embarrassed and fearful to own Jesus before the rules. Amen. Because uh, they'd rather be endorsed or approved by man than by God. Amen. Silent or undercover believers. Amen. Cowards are what they are. Amen. With low self-esteem and low self-worth. Am I right about This is the same mindset that forces people to follow the crowd rather than to follow Jesus. Am I right about it? Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. So we find that Psalm 118 says it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Right. So, no matter how you look at it, the praise of God, amen, it is more superior to the praise or the pat on the back from a man. But if you are a solid or undercover believer, this suits you just fine. What kind of believer are you? So far we have the unbeliever. Then we have the silent or undercover believer. Now in verses 44 to 46, Jesus himself describes my last kind of believer. The kind that everybody should be or aspire to be. For this part of this passage describes a true believer. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So to paraphrase this passage, Jesus says, the person who believes in me actually not only believes in me, but also in my Father who sent me. Hey, God, hey, God. Here, Jesus again stating his absolute union that he has with God the Father. He is saying, in essence, that uh, it is utterly impossible to believe in one without believing in the other. To believe in Jesus is to believe, amen, in hey, God the Father. You cannot believe in the Father unless you also give equal honor to the Son. Isn't that right? Jesus says in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Ain't God with God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, in the natural sense, nobody on earth 
can see God. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh huh. He is a spirit and therefore invisible to the natural eye. Amen. Uh, but the Lord Jesus Christ has come into the world and let us know what God is like. He has revealed the character of God. Amen. To us. Therefore, whosoever has seen Christ has also seen the Father. Am I right about it? Amen. The illustration of a light is, uh, is uh, one of the Lord's favorite illustrations. Again, he refers to himself as a light coming into the world in order that those who believe in him should not abide in darkness. Apart from Jesus, mankind is in the deepest darkness. They do not have a right understanding of life of death and eternity. Amen. But true believers who come to Jesus, amen, in faith, are no longer in the dark, searching for the truth. Because they have now found the truth in Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. And that's why I like what John 1 says. He says, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them who believe on his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And John 8, 32 says, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And not only that, but the Bible says, if therefore the Son shall make you free, uh -huh. you shall be free. Indeed. Amen. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. Amen. I'm about to wrap this thing up. Give the Lord a hand clap. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Three kinds of believers. According to this text today, the unbeliever is the one who refuses to believe in Jesus despite the overwhelming evidence that he is the son of God and the savior of the world. The unbelief is one who heard or who hears the word of God, but continually rejects it over and over by saying no to the salvation that comes only from believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and confessing him as your savior. Uh -huh. The unbelief is the one who closes his eyes to the truth of Jesus and hardens his heart against the saving faith in him, what kind of believer are you? Then there's the sound of a couple believer who believes in Jesus and accepts his word as true, but is somehow ashamed to let the world know that they are identified with him for fear of their rejection or reaction. Ain't God good God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this kind of belief is a coward and a fraud and lacks the courage that it takes to be in the army of the Lord. Right. I don't know if you know it or not, but unlike Uncle Sam, and like Uncle Sam, God is looking for a few good men, women, boys, and girls. Right. Is that all right? But you need to know on today that young or old, God don't want and he don't need no coward soldiers in his band. Am I right about it? But here is a message to all the silent and other colored believers today. Our Matthew 10, in the words of Jesus, say, Whosoever shall confess me before me, yeah, yeah. him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. Is that all right? But whosoever shall deny me before me, he said, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Am I right about it? Oh, yeah. Then he says in Mark, amen, chapter 8, Jesus said, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Is that all right? Yes, yes. Whosoever shall save his life, they shall lose it. 
But whosoever will lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. And God is God. And what does it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and then lose his own soul? Or what should a man give in exchange for his soul and God to God? And whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, he said of him shall the Son of God be ashamed to own before God and the holy angels. Is that all right? So then, my brothers and sisters, it is a dangerous thing to be a silent or undercover believer in the sight of God. Is that all right? And in light of this time and information, amen, I want to ask what kind of believer are you today? So finally, as I get ready to call today, I wonder how many of you here on today Amen. I'll turn what I call a true believer. Amen. If you are a true believer, you ought to shout hallelujah in the house. Because you ain't to somehow bypass the temptation of submitting to hallelujah and unbelief of being an unbeliever. As well as a silent or undercover believer. A God of the God. You press your way through all the criticism, through all the harsh words, through all the backlash, through all the ridicule, a man that comes with being a true believer, and you overcame the world, and believe wholeheartedly on the Lord, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and repented of your sins, and accepted him as your own personal Savior, a God of the God, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith in God and God. You are not of those who draw back unto perdition, but those who believe to the saving of the soul. Is that all right? You decided like Paul when he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God of the salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. For the just shall live, thank God by faith. Is that all right? The Lord of Hallelujah and heaven embraced this mindset and attitude. Amen. And this way of holy life. You are now a true believer. Somebody ought to shout Hallelujah. And you're one who, like me, can say that I. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been a whole lot of places. I've seen a whole lot of people. Amen. I've seen a whole lot of things and have met a whole lot of people. But I have found out in fact that can't nobody do it like Jesus. Can't nobody do it like the Lord God can. Is that all right? He picked me up when I was falling down. On solid ground, he's my company keeper. When no one's around, and then I rock, he saved my soul, and then he made me whole. And God is God, and that's why I can sing with the late Reverend Timothy Rock when he said, Yes, I'm a believer. Yes, I'm a believer. He said, Yes, I'm a believer. He was saying, In essence, I'm not an unbeliever. I'm not a sound or an undercover believer, but I am a true believer. He went on to say, I believe in Jesus Christ. He the give up of all life. From heaven, he came down. Oh, what joy I found. No, no, you were not there. You don't know when or where. Well, the Lord had done for me. He gave me the victory. Yes, I'm a believer. Oh, yes. I'm a believer. Is that all right? Because he saved my life. Amen. I'm a true believer. Because he paid the price. I'm a true believer. Yes. I'm holding I believe that he is the Christ. The son of the living God. Yes, I believe that he is the way. The truth and the life. Yes, I believe. Amen. That he overcame the world. And God to God. Yes, I believe that God committed his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
they listened to it because she made an impact out there in Canada. Yeah. Am I right about it? Amen. Amen. And she was able to tell them, and then they came out to see Jesus for themselves. That's right. And once they saw him, they said, Lady, we believe him. Uh -huh. We're true believers. Not because That's what right. we see, but because we have seen for ourselves yeah. that you know and understand that he is the Christ, yeah. the Son of the living God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. When you hear for yourself, Amen. The magnificent word of God. And the thing that the Lord has done, amen, if you got your head on straight, you can't do nothing but be a true believer. Amen. amen. To God be the glory. The word of God has been preached. Is there anybody in this place, out of this place, wants to give his or her life to Jesus? Now is your time. Today is your day. Now is the accepted time and is the day of salvation. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden out your hearts. As in the provocation. But Jesus is, of course, knocking at the door of your hearts. And all you have to do is let him in. Amen. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Amen. And he said that if you open up, he said, I will come in and sup with you and you with me. Isn't that all right? I'm a living witness that Jesus will take you and he's able to take you and make something beautiful out of your life. Amen. Will there be one today? That want to come to know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. There may be someone listening to me today, amen, on the Facebook, amen, that wants to give your life to Jesus. If so, I want you to bow your heads, pray this prayer with me, Father God in heaven, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I come before you today recognizing that I'm a sinner in need of salvation. I believe in you, Father. I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ. I believe that he died on the cross for my sin. That you raised him from the dead for my justification. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. Come into my heart. Make me a new creature. And Lord, based on your word, I will make you the Lord and Master and Savior of my life. And today I want to thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Any of you prayed that prayer and you were sincere in your heart, you are now child of God. Bible says that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. If you are a child of God now, just like in the text, you don't need to be an undercover believer. You need to be a true believer. And don't be ashamed to own the Lord anywhere you go. Amen. Shout, yes, I'm a believer. A true believer. Amen. Amen. We discharge our duty. Amen. We thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. Have a beautiful rest of the day. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for you. Truly, I want to thank you all so much for your time, your attention, and your attendance here on the day. At this time, we're going to leave room for words of expression or remarks from anyone in the congregation. Amen. Before we proceed forward, God bless you.
we ought to want to go out as Reverend Boone said and make an impact on other lost souls out here in the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. We got to retool. Amen. And we got to renew our witness. Amen. We don't witness like we used to. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. We got to start letting our lights so shine before me. That they may see our good works, glorify our Father who is in heaven. And after letting our light shine, we are in a position where we can witness to people about the Lord. Amen. And they might want to share the light that we share in as being children of God and true believers. Amen. Amen. So don't forget to tell somebody about you. You run into somebody that don't know him. Amen. Let them know that God is real. Amen. And that they need him as well as you. Amen. And put your best foot forward and be a witness for the Lord. Amen. 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 To God be good. At this time, we want to uh, get ready for our offering for those who will participate today. And we're going to stand at this moment, at this hour, and make our profession before we give. The bag of profession is given for those who don't know it. There may be a sheet in the back of the pew that you can look on. Amen. How long have we been saying it now? Y'all been doing about right. <laughs> huh? It's been a few years. Amen. All right. We're going to make our profession. Everybody all together. Father God in heaven, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for this gift which I hold in my hand. I gladly honor you with my substance and with the first fruits of all of my increase. I bring in my tithes and offerings into the storehouse, rejoice. That provision will be made for this house of God. I am a generous giver as you are a generous God. So as I joyfully give this gift, I thank you, Father, that what I give shall be given unto me. Good men, pressed down, shaped together, and running over shall be given to my bosom. With this gift, I'm sowing bountifully into the kingdom of God. Therefore, I shall reap bountifully in my personal life. And as I sow, my spirit is strong, my mind is bright. My health is great, my bills are paid, my needs are met, my family is blessed, prosperity is mine, and born again ministry is found in every area possible by the will of God. I am blessed, I am blessed. Thank you, Lord, I am blessed. See you You lead the shout, hallelujah. Now, how many people do I have in BAM today that can be a witness, a living witness, and a living testimony? That when you present God with your tithes and your offerings, uh -huh. won't he make a way for you? Yeah. 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 Huh? Yeah. Won't he do great things in your life? Yeah. Yeah. Won't he bless you real, real, real yeah. good? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right, I think I got to throw that little endorsement out. Because I know I feel that way, but I know I ain't by myself. Right. Because as you all know, God is no respecter of persons. And there is no secret what God can do. What he's done for me, he'll do for you. Am I right about it? What he's done for you, he'll do for me. Amen? Amen. It ought to be some happy people at this hour ready to walk around here for those who are going to give today. And of course, we understand some give by cash out, some give by bail. That's fine. Amen. But whatever way you give, you ought to feel good when you do. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to be uh, gathered by the, the ushers, the deacons. <laughs> 